Hi there, and welcome to the first rehearsal in the brand new Digital Center. I'm Jesse Stein, alongside Cara Capilano. Jesse, we have tons to get to in the show today. Roger Clemens rocketing toward 8-0, Smarty Jones dumbfounding his competition. But first, just how the Lakers-Spurs series took shape more than a year ago. Here's Dan Patrick. They may not be wearing ruby slippers, but there's no place like home for teams in the Eastern Conference playoffs. That includes the Pistons and the Nets, both clubs dominating on the respective home courts. Detroit winning the first two games of their series by 37 points combined, and after dropping two straight in New Jersey, needing a repeat home performance in Game 5 tonight. And SportsCenter Express, we got Pistons, Nets, third quarter. K Kerry Kittles moving up court, Jason Kidd hits a three, and then we get a graphic in the middle. Here we go, up court again, Kidd this time. Gets it to go late in the third. Nets up big. They won. Now we go on. Calgary Flames at the Sharks. Early first slap shot goal. There it is. I don't know that guy. I should. 3-1 now in the third. There's another graphic for you. Shot. Score. Again, La. Flames take that one. We got Roger Clemens going for 8-0. He gets some Astro strike out there. Uh, Marlin, I mean. There he goes. He gets low. 11 Ks for him. Astros win or lose or something. Thanks, Jesse. We have a Yankees comeback, kids here. Tuesday night, Yankees versus the Angels. They come back from a three run deficit to tie the game, force extra innings. Gary Sheffield provided the game winning hit with two outs, scoring A Rod. Yanks went on to win 8 7 and 10. On May 9th, the Yankees faced the Mariners. After trailing 6 0 in the second inning, the Yanks chipped away at the deficit until Matsui hit a sack fly in the eighth, again scoring A-Rod. Yanks go ahead for good, winning at 7-6. May 5th, Yankees play the A's, mounting a ninth inning comeback, starting with an A-Rod solo shot right there. Four batters later, who else but the big man, Tony Clark, roping a double to the left center field gap, scoring Jorge Posada. Yanks win their eighth straight game at the time. Then, the day before that, May 4th, Yankees exploded in the seventh, scoring six runs. A-Rod hit a three-run shot to begin with. Then it was Ruben Sierra with a bases clearing doubled. Yankees won that one, 10-8. And then back on April 27th, it was the Yankees again facing the A's. This time the Yankees exploded in the eighth inning with big hits from Sheffield. Hip hip Jorge Posada, Ruben Sierra, game tie winning two run double. Yanks win four run, and that was 10-8 eight, eight win. Still ahead on SportsCenter, will Barry's bad streak continue? Is he human? Is he still the best player in baseball history? And he's had a good run at Penn State. Should he be retiring? So why is Joe Paterno sticking around for four more years? Answers are ahead. You're watching Sports Center. It is time now for a little fact or fiction. Joined by our NBA pundits, Jesse Stein and Todd Snyder. Guys, let's get started. The first topic, Nets will defeat the Pistons. Jesse, let's start with you. I got the Pistons in seven games. They got a much better offense, and Jason Kidd, I had a feeling, is not going to show up in game seven, folks. Yeah, I, once again, I take the Nets in seven games. I, mean, I think Jason Kidd, he's hobbled right now, but he'll turn it around with uh, Kmart and RJ. Speaking of Kmart, Kmart is better than Rashid. Jesse? Uh, I got to go with fact, yes. Definitely, I would go with Kevin Garnett over Rashid. Just his ability to carry the ball off court itself shows you that he's a better player. Todd? I'm going to go with uh, Kenyon. Uh, just the same thing, Kmart. I mean, but Jason Kidd does make him a much better player. Next topic, Nets will win the series. Jesse? Again, I got to go with fiction on that one. Um, the Nets just don't seem like they're going to have a good game seven. And I'm seeing Kevin Garnett, but I'm still going to go with the Nets. Todd? All right, Nets, Kevin Garnett. Not the same series, but I'll take the Nets in seven. Let's move on to the other series. <laughs> Sam Cassell is quicker than Mike Bibby. Jesse? Uh, yes, even though Sam's older, I'm going to have to go with the veteran. 
With his experience, I feel that he could definitely outplay Bibby at any moment. Todd. Uh, I'm going with Mike Bibby. I mean, he makes everybody else so much better around him. I mean, he's he's gonna be in, he's the best point guard in the Western Conference by far. And a series prediction: Kings will win the series against the Timberwolves. Jesse. I'm going to have to go with the T-Wolves there. I got a feeling that uh, it's going to go seven. Garnett's going to probably have a big game, and that's why he's the MVP. Todd? I'm going to go with the Kings. I'm going to say Kevin Garnett goes scoreless. Uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, Kings in seven games. Go scoreless. This is going to be the guy's 28th birthday. Look what he has meant for the state of Minnesota. I can't believe that you'd say that. Well, you know, it's like saying uh, it will be his birthday. I just think he's in a full under pressure, though, finally. Sacramento, veteran guys, been running around together four or five years, uh, cages in the fold. He won't go scoreless, but it'll be a 10 10 game. Jesse, fact or fiction, the Kings have no go to star? I would have to say that is a fact. Chris Webber doesn't ever really seem to show up when it matters. Everybody remembers the famous timeout. What more do you need to say? So you like the Kings. Who's their star, Todd? I'm going to go with Peja. I mean, uh, right now it's the worst shooting we've seen in playoffs in 40 years. Uh, the teams are buying to shoot like 40%, but. He's, he's like above everybody else. Peja, he'll knock down like five or six threes, have a 30-point game. Todd Snyder and Jesse Stein joining us for Fact or Fiction. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to both those series. Apparently, Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers do not forget anniversaries. Exactly one year to the day after being dethroned by the San Antonio Spurs, LA gets its revenge and sends San Antonio packing for a summer at the Riverwalk. As the light shines brighter in L.A., it seems that its impending dimming also draws near. Still to come on SportsCenter, our top ten spin-off characters, Frazier, says goodbye to America tonight. We introduce you to ten players whose second tour of duty was better than their first. And we ask you to log on and vote on ESPN.com. Who is your favorite Frazier of all time? Give Joe your vote if you care. undefeated and it's on to Belmont. Smarty Jones didn't just win, he won by the largest margin in the 129 year history of the Preakness, 11 and a half lengths, breaking the record set in the first Preakness in 1873, a mark that Funnyside nearly equaled last year. Little Reds visiting La La Land against the Dodgers. Bottom six, a scary moment here. Paula Duca with a foul ball. Ryan Friel in right field giving the chase. Friel into the stands. Oh boy, look at that. Dives headlong into the stands, hits a fan. Woman holding her head there, as you can see. Take one more look at this, folks. A little scary here. Friel's knee hits a spectator in the face. Friel looks a bit concerned for the fan, as you can see, coming up here on this shot. This fan would be all right and helped out of the park. We go to the top of the eighth, Reds already up 2-0, a man on for Griffey Jr. Look at him go the other way, folks. That's Griffey's eighth, the Reds up 4-0. Griffey coming around here, as you can see. Bottom ninth now, same score. It's Laduca again to right. Field this time comes along and makes the play in the right center field gap. Reds win 4-0. Welcome back. Our Did You Know Tonight is complete utter nonsense. We couldn't think of one good significant thing that you might not know, but the producer of the show was a little light. He decided he needed to fill some time, so... Did you know Wally Zerbiak's uniform number is 10? Yes, that is true. And we had to, a VO cut for this, so it was real easy to make this. Did you know? Zerbiak also is tall and apparently plays basketball for a living. And Josh Bernstein has a dry sense of humor. Indeed he does. Wally has not been playing the basketball very often, as you saw there. Landed right on his tuchus, broke a couple of bones in his spine from Long Island. Where did he play who? Wisconsin. Is that correct? That could no. be true. I would Miami not know that. Miami of Ohio. I, that's something I would did not you know. know? Okay, I did not know that. We know now. This just in before we say goodbye, former Nets center Jason Williams learning today that he will be retried for reckless manslaughter in the death of limousine driver Costas Christoffi. The news coming less than a month after the jury in the original trial offered a mixed verdict on that charge.
Next Sports Center coming up at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Keith Olbermann and Dr. Joyce hosting what tonight. What a duo that's going to be. For Jesse Stein, I'm Kara Capuano. Thanks for living through this with us, and good night. Our Did You Know Tonight, utter nonsense. We couldn't think of anything good to say or anything significant you might want to know, but the producer of the show was light, so this is what we have for you. Did you know Wally Zerbiak's uniform number is 10? Yes, that is true. And we had a VO cut, so it was really easy to make this Did You Know Up. Zerbiak is also tall and apparently plays basketball for a living. Indeed he does, and his team plays on in the series against the Lakers. For those of you that don't have to stick around and do extra work tonight, you could watch that game one between the Lakers and Timberwolves. That'd be a fun Friday night. Before we say goodbye, this just in, former Net Center Jason Williams will be retried for reckless manslaughter and the death of a limousine driver at his home. This news coming less than a month after a jury delivered a mixed verdict in the original trial. Next Sports Center coming up at 6.17 a.m. Pacific Time, Mr. Ed and Kermit the Frog, two new hires, will be your hosts. Thanks for joining us. With Jesse, I'm Kara. Have a good night and good weekend.